Sure. Uh, hi, welcome to Ghostman Radio Station, and tonight my guest is Vanessa Dimitropoulos. <laughs> I'm glad she said that because I did try very badly to say her <laughs> name, but as I'm now sitting in the corner with my dunce hat on, I have to now <laughs> mention that you may know Vanessa from a different form of life, for she was acting in very numerous series and films and you name it she's probably done it but today we're talking about the scapegoat now what is the scapegoat people may ask well, it's the mission is to reform physiological abuse laws education law enforcement and end the trauma abuse cycle with the following objectives which Vanessa would tell me about sure um so the escaped boat we are seeking to reform psychological abuse laws there aren't any laws in the united states that are federal at least there are some states who have emotional distress laws um and also coercive control which i think in the uk is now in law and because it's been put into law <clears throat> law enforcement had to learn the law. <laughs> law enforcement will only enforce what they are hired to enforce, which is the law. So if it doesn't exist, then they have no interest in it. And over the past couple of years, we've seen um, some public cases like Amber Heard, Johnny Depp, and even Gabby Petito, um, cases where the police were not informed as to tactics used by psychological abusers. You know, you're not seeing bruises, you're not seeing broken bones, but the amount of physical and emotional damage that psychological abuse inflicts is so grave and it's so deep on a cellular level. Um, many of the victims of psychological abuse, specifically narcissistic abuse, end up committing suicide. It's very isolating. Um, nobody understands it unless you've been through it. So um, it, it's a huge problem in our country. and. I mean, the United States has a bit of a narcissistic personality of its own, so <laughs> kind of, I might be seriously going on an uphill battle that I might never win, but I have to try because what I went through was the worst experience of my life, and and I lost friends. You know, anyone can Google my arrest video. I have charges. All of this stuff that was brought upon by this this person and this family to destroy the career that I had worked for for 11 years. And this happens all over the place. You know, I just happened to be on The Walking Dead. And so they thought, well, let's let's crank up the uh, malignancy and let's sell her arrest video to TMZ. You know, and I almost committed suicide that night. I, I think arrested. that's what the pe people don't understand. I mean, obviously, with, I don't mean it's disparaging people, don't get me the wrong way, but when you see someone's been hit with a black eye or bruises or whatever you see, and you think, oh, my God, poor man, poor woman, da, da, da. But when you, someone says to you, oh, my husband's been doing this and doing that, or my wife's doing, been doing this and doing that, people go, yeah, really? Are you sure? Yeah. I mean, and, right. exactly. and, 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 you know, I'm not being, I'm not dismissing No, you're absolutely correct. Everybody says it, don't they? Because my wife went, before she married me, she had a, a similar kind of experience um, she, she never talks about it, but we don't, we just don't push it because I don't think, unless she wants to really talk about it, that's her right as a human being to whether she wants to talk about it or not. Right. It's a hard subject. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, I was just having this conversation with a victim yesterday, actually. Uh, no matter how much we list out what these abusers do, it's it's very difficult to convey the weight of what those actions carry. So if someone says, well, he manipulates or he, you know, berates me and he yells at me, it's it doesn't sound as awful as it actually is. I mean, nobody should be yelling at their partner or putting them down, of course. But the, the, the manipulation, the bottom line is the abuser in this situation has little to no empathy and they're using their tactics to distort the reality of the victim the victim is seeing very clearly what is happening but when they question that they're told that no that's not happening 
you're out of your mind, you're losing your mind, and then they somehow flip the script, and next thing you know, the victim is at fault for everything. So, you know, a lot of people have referenced the movie Gaslight, which is actually Angel Street, was the original play, where the husband was moving things around the house and hiding things and convincing her that she hid his watch, and she moved that picture. And after so long, and you start to wonder what's happening, did I actually do that? And so it, it really is a mental rape because you are kind of rewiring the chemistry of someone's brain. You're, you're getting them to believe that a reality that they're seeing is not real. And so, like you said, because there aren't bruises and you don't see the, the physical impact on the surface, I'll say, then it's really hard to believe. And of course, if someone were to go to court, the burden is on the victim to prove damages. Not like when you, like, if you were to break into somebody's house. We have a law against breaking and entering, and we have a law against burglary and theft. Well, in this case, the abuser is breaking and entering into the victim's mind. But there's also, there, there is a theft, but you don't see it because this is, an, this is our mind. It's not a physical component of the body that we can look at. But there are countless studies that show what long-term psychological, physical, and even addictive abuse can do to a person's mind. It can deteriorate the gray matter. Um, victims suffer from autoimmune disorder. Oh, I mean, I've, I've been through it. You know, the anxiety, the depression, the PTSD, the Do you think it's PTSD. all mixed up? Because I'm a great believer because I have mental health problems. But if you have a mental health problem, it comes a physical problem as well. You know, oh, you know, your physical health dramatically goes down here. I know a lot of people say, oh, yeah, but I say it's like you go to the gym, you go to pick a weight up. When you pick a weight up, your mind has to say, oh, yeah, I can pick that up because the body sometimes goes, oh, well, do I have to pick that up? And it's not the same right. analogy, but you know what I mean? No, you're exactly right. I mean, if we were to take the brain outside of the body and say it was sitting here on our shoulder, then we'd see the damage to it. But because we can't see it and it's inside, we just, there, there's some major gap in society. At least in America, we tout mental health awareness. We have the hashtag for it, right? But what is the point of that when, one, your society is lending to the destruction of mental health through social media, the cyberbullying? I mean, People on social media, are they can be very, very nasty and vulgar. And I go through and sometimes I literally cry at how mean people are. And I thought, wouldn't it be an interesting game show if we took all the people who were saying the mean things and they had to actually face the person that they were saying it well, to in yeah. real life? Yeah. <laughs> and Could I, they? I, I know you want to get a similar law, law to the UK, which you've mentioned before, like a Adhesive law, which we have over the year. All right, it's not. I don't know how many people actually go to court with it at the moment. I'm not. I don't know right. that, but at least there's something there as a guideline. I mean, there's no such no. thing as a perfect system, as you know. But if it, as long as someone right. can go somewhere and they can talk about it, and it can be someone can say yes, that is what you told me is right. We'll take them to court, and sometimes just that means of taking someone to court might make that other person go, oh, my God, I didn't realize I did this. I mean, that won't happen all the time, but it might be that one person. But it goes, might happen, right, it might happen once in a while, and it, it seems like what that, you know, I'll just, I'll just say narcissist for the sake of this conversation, because a lot of the psychological abuse really, it, it, it is um, demonstrated by narcissists. The, the only, there is no cure for narcissism, and I, when I say narcissism, I want to be clear I don't mean just someone who's a selfish person. I mean someone who's on the spectrum of narcissistic personality disorder, which means they have very little empathy. So our Ted Bundy, narcissist, right? He didn't care. He actually found joy in the pain that he was inflicting on others. So when we're talking about a narcissist, the, the thing that they're most afraid of is exposure of their true self. That true self is the self that they have manage to mask up for their entire life and and what's very tragic is the narcissist developed his narcissism because he probably grew up in a home where there was a narcissist who was 
constantly shaming them, shaming them to the point where they felt that their true authentic self wasn't, wasn't worth um, letting other people see. And they began to hate themselves so much. So in order to survive, because that's what narcissism really is about. It's our survival mechanism. We have to think of, think of ourselves. How are we going to survive? Well, in a narcissist case, they can't survive with their authentic self. They hate it so much. It's been so shamed. So the only way to really kind of break through and shatter that, I guess, the ego is the only way I can I can say it is some level of humiliation, something to cause what's known as the narcissistic injury, something that will wake the narcissist narcissist up. But it, this is not the scary thing is that there is little to zero ch little to zero chance that you can rehabilitate a narcissist or a psychological abuser, which means what they're out in society. They're always going to be out there preying on victims. And now we know a little bit more about it and more people are starting to speak out loud. And I think with every movement that has anything to do with abuse, the first thing besides awareness is someone coming forward and saying, hey, this happened to me. And then the next person feeling like, wow, they did that. I think I could do it too. And next thing you know, people are coming out of the woodwork left and right because this is happening all over the place. And it's embarrassing. You know, I was, I studied psychology in four years. I just am fascinated with it. And as an actor, I studied the human condition. And the person I was dating was actually a future mental health therapist. He was in school to be a, a counselor. So I felt very stupid that I knew nothing about this type of, of abuse, that it caught me so blindsided. And you mentioned about the suicide. I mean, we all know that to be in a suicidal state you have to be in a very bad bad place people don't understand this they think it's all oh, yeah i'm going to commit suicide because it's used as too commonly sometimes by teenagers you know what i mean yeah right i, I think they don't really mean know what the meaning is because to be really that bad that you really want to take your own life it's quite a bad place to be in your life i mean i've, I've been in my past so I do know it's, it's, it, it, you're in that state, you don't think everything's against you. You can't come up with any real solutions. The only way out is you think, oh, well, bugger it, I'll go, you know, no one's going to care. But sometimes there's a one thing that draws you back. Now, what was that one thing that drew you back? It was actually, <clears throat> excuse me, after you, I was released from the jail and I went back to my home, those people were still there and they were yelling at me, you're homeless, you can't afford to live here, this isn't your home, which I had been living there a year and a half on the lease. So after it was all said and done, I mean, <clears throat> I was treated very poorly in the jail um, by the female officer and then this entire family, like about 13 people and all the cops at my place, <clears throat> excuse me, I had already for three months, I had hardly eaten, I had hardly slept, I had been um, slandered and smeared on social media to my local police department. It felt as if there was, there was no help. I was on, I mean, the, the police helped them do this. So when I was finally alone in the apartment and I could go back there, I had decided I, I just I want to die in this apartment. There was a level of like I wanted my my vindication too. I want them to have to come in and see my body, and it's the only way that anyone's going to understand what I went through. Um, and I started, you know, I just kept circling around the apartment, and I said, "Fine, you can do it. You can take your life, but you have to wait till the morning." Like I was talking to myself, how? Because I didn't want to die, but I, 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 I didn't want to live anymore. Like if if people could be this cruel, I felt like what was the point if the person that I thought I was marrying could be this heinous and this malicious? I, I just, I, it seemed like there was no other way out. But I, and I do have a very strong uh, mind. I, I told myself that I 
could do this, but I had to wait till the morning. I guess I was kind of playing a trick with myself <laughs> to see if I could just make it to the morning. And after that, I kind of let it go. I said, go about your night. I went to sleep. When I got up the next morning, I wanted help. So I reached out to a therapist that I had been seeing, and I reached out to a friend that I had known since second grade. I explained to them what I had been experiencing, and both of them encouraged me to get out of the apartment, to get out of even the state if I needed to for a little bit, and to stay in close contact with them. I had already had a safety plan in place because the feelings were starting to come up um, earlier that week and the week before, so I got one in place with my therapist. But then that night, it was really just a matter of, of will. And more of my will was set on living than on dying. Thank you for discussing that bit. I know it's hard for you to do, but I think it's important for your story. But personally, I think it's important that people realize that you among women and men, we have to mention men go through this as well. Yes. Probably not as, (laughs) publicized as women but we won't go into that now obviously you want the law changed do you think it will ever change in america because obviously at the moment i know we've had the the abortion law re done over i mean i i don't want to know what you use way but i think it's wrong but that's just me from a man point of view but um do you think it will ever come in america because it's the, the conservative states over there You know, I don't know because um, a lot of the people that I speak with, I guess you could say, are on the conservative side. But a lot of them ended up there because they went through a situation like this. This situation, it. it, Three fifty-five p.m. Alarm stopped on Mark's Echo Show. it, It. It shattered the illusion of not just. The narcissist in the personal life but of on a, on a much bigger scale the government pharmaceutical industries even hollywood you know once you start to see through some bullshit you see it everywhere and it's almost like you can't you can't unsee it now so while i do think that a lot of conservatives are very like well you got yourself into that mess you can get yourself out kind of a mentality <clears throat> i also know that they're you know there's a sense of wanting to achieve sovereignty. And when we treat people like this, or when we allow people to be treated this way, we're not allowing anyone to exist as their sovereign being. So I don't know if the laws will change. I can say that in some states they've added coercive control. That's a start. I think that nothing can change until there's enough complaints there's enough court filings there's enough voices to say yes this is a problem that needs attention it's not just one person this is happening all over the place then of course there's there are so many other things that sometimes i think does this even matter because you know there's there involving us in the war in ukraine and then there we've got our homeless people and we've they're trying to, there's so many issues that i i'm thinking is this just going to fall through the cracks but i'm just trying to stay in my lane i can't fix everything i went through this i was chosen to go through this you know if i hadn't have been an actor and this happened to me i'm perhaps would not be pursuing this but i feel like whatever sliver of notoriety that i do have i want to use it for this well um, Vanessa, i think i not. think personally this is only me speaking i can hear your passion i can hear your story and i think it's important that you've done i think you should stick keep it as much as you can get keep banging on the doors hopefully other people listen to this and they'll think yeah vanessa what can, where can we get some help so vanessa please mention where they could go so that you can learn more and perhaps start a petition or whatever you have to do in america to get the law the law right yeah so um definitely people can go to the website it's www.theescapedgoat.com there are plenty of resources in the ways in the way of books uh videos coaches so if someone needs more of the healing aspect 
that's there. I don't personally conduct any of that, but there are lots of wonderful coaches. And then we have a take action page where a victim can tell their story anonymously. They can get involved in contributing time and services if they are a PR person, um, if they're an attorney, uh, social media. We need so really, it's just me doing this right now. So I need all the help that I can get. Um, so there are plenty of resources on the website to either get involved with this specific movement or if you are a victim and you need help and you're not in a place where you can quite take action yet, there are several resources where you can maybe reach out to those coaches and they can give you some healing modalities and really, and these are, these are coaches who they themselves have been victims of this type of abuse. So they get it. They completely get it. And also, um, how would you, what would you say to someone listening to this podcast now who may be going through this, this situation and thinking to themselves, what do I do? Cause you know, and I know the bravest step to do is making that first step. It's not the easiest step in the world, but you have to make that first step. How would you encourage them to make that first step? One, I would want to tell every single one of them, you are not crazy, <laughs> first and foremost. The second thing is, and my little tagline is, GTFO, heal and take action. you got to get the F out of there. And in these situations, it can be very dangerous to get out. So I, I, I have a little safety plan on my page. There's also a safety plan that can be downloaded from a website that is Narcissist Abuse Support. I believe that's what it's called. Um, they've got to get out. They have to get out. This will never change. Um, and I think what naturally will happen is to really start looking within. We have to look inside of ourselves and ask how we became a victim to this type of personality. And there are codependent tendencies. It's, it's also really tragic because it's often people who have very good hearts and they just want to be loved but they betray themselves and they stay in situations that are not healthy because they'd rather be alone. They'd rather be in a relationship that isn't healthy than be alone. And I think that's something that really needs attention and needs to change. So just get the hell out of there. Do it safely. <laughs> Make sure you know who your allies are. <clears throat> well, Vanessa, I thank you for discussing this today. I know it's been hard for you and, I accept it's a very hard subject to talk about. But I think the more you talk about it, the better you'll be. I personally think you should write some sort of book at some stage when you feel... Working up. on it. Yeah, and <laughs> I would thought, I would call it walks and all part of the, bit, the legal bits that you can't put in, obviously. But I would be right. totally yourself. I, that's my personal opinion. I think if you're going to write something about this, be yourself. Say it in... The, the bits that people will go, Ooh, I don't feel like reading that. But that's the bit yeah, right. that you want because then other people will recognise that bit and then they'll go, oh, yes, I think you're right. So um, we've come to the end of this now and I uh, thank you for call, um, accepting my call and talking about your subject. Um, and uh, Vanessa, whose was the last name I could not pronounce, um, <laughs> Thank you for being on my show. And um, I think we've covered most of the things we want to call, uh, talk about today. So please go and t take check out www.escapegoat.com. Do your story. Tell your story. Be like Vanessa. Have the strength to be a beautiful soul in this world. Because we all need to be a beautiful soul. You can all be the darkness. We're all capable of darkness. But find your light. That's what, I mean, I'm capable of darkness. Everyone's got your darkness. But I'm glad that you found your light now, Vanessa. I'm, as you can see, you're a much better person. Um, Thank you. Just remember that. If you ever had a bad day, remember the worst thing you've ever been through is what you've been through. You can't go back. You can only move forward. Right. Thank you. I, I appreciate you so much for having me on. And also for the nudge on the book, because the outline has been sitting here and... I needed You've got no excuse, man. You're sitting near that oh, computer. Thank you. Just, just <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah, I know what it's like. It's, but you need this. You need a bit of a kick up the 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been so focused on this ago. Yeah, yeah, it's time. So I, I, I maybe that was a little sign, and you're the messenger. So I appreciate you very much. <laughs> so Vanessa, thank you for being on the show again. Is there anything last words you would like to say? Just hang on. Just hang on. I think that's. I think that's what so many people, whether it's this situation or another situation, I think we all need a little bit of encouragement right now, and we need people to be a little bit nicer right now. So, <laughs> if anything, let's all be a little bit kinder. Well, you uh, remind me we, of the Yes song oh. then. You said, hang on, and said so the only way is up. I'm sorry? It's a Yes song. It's a song by Yaz, and it's, it goes, what you just said, and then it goes, the, the only way is up. Oh, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know that. So I'm going to go on Spotify yeah, right now and yeah, check it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please thank do. you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you very much, and thank you very much. And Tati Tala, as they say in England. We yeah, goodbye. Cheerio. <laughs> thank you for being on See the you. show.